I think being black in China has been a wonderful opportunity to kind of dispel stereotypes and preconceived notions of what people may have seen on television and things like that. And so just to be, to relate to people as human, as a human being, but then also recognizing that I am a black individual, I'm a black male, um, and to connect with them on a very... Welcome to the Melanated Files. In this series, we highlight and share the stories of black people from across the globe. Remember to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and also follow us on social media for regular updates. Let's get into the interview. So today I'm in Shanghai and I'm in the former French concession area and we're gonna meet someone very very special today a very talented multidisciplinary artist here in Shanghai we're almost at his art house let's check it out all right this is gonna blow your mind let's go okay here we go Hey, hey Redick, <laughs> what's up, what's up, what's up? I was just telling them that you're one of the most interesting people I've met. So yeah, tell me about, what's your name first of all and where are you from? I am from Chicago. Um, I, my, as an artist, I go by Redick and I'm from Chicago. I have been living in China now for several years, Shanghai, China. And this is my temporary art house that you're coming into. So let me show you around and just kind of Tell the story of what's been going on in my house. Yeah, so tell us what, what do you do? I am a multidisciplinary artist, music, visual art, poetry, fashion. Essentially, I'm a storyteller at heart. And this body of work has all been made in China over the last several years, almost eight years. And the goal has, the goal is that we are getting ready to finally unleash an immersive inspiration exhibition that will link, um, essentially I'm a storyteller at heart. And so we are working on um, releasing this exhibition that links art to the music and to the poetry that I've been writing over the last um, several years. So this, these are my Shanghai chapters um, told through music, told through visual art. Um, all of the work that you see here has been made using found materials. I have eight series here. Um, this is my bamboo series here. These are my blue windows and glass canvas series. And this is what um, working from home looks like. Several years ago, I didn't want to take on another expense, so I started working from home and kind of like the game Tetris. This is my mind, uh, my way of Tetrising through, and literally it just kind of morphed into the common area, so I was like, hey, if my neighbors can have bikes and strollers and balloons and whatever in the common areas, everyone is storing things in the common areas. I have extra art that I'm storing in the common areas, but it's been for this main goal. So why did you start? I started when my feet, feet hit the ground. Um, so I've been in China since 2010, Shanghai, China since 2010. Um, but all of this, like I said, is linked to the music and poetry that I've been writing. Well. All right, nice. So like this place is amazing. And do you want to show something here? Because sure. I, I want to like take them upstairs and show them. But yeah, All right. tell so us the story of this you're door. You're going to see doors throughout <laughs> the house. 
This is door number 14. Um, originally there were 16 districts in Shanghai and I wanted to commemorate those doors, I mean those districts and everything that doors represent universally. Essentially, I am, I feel that through my work, I'm kind of storytelling the human experience. So there are themes that are directly related to Shanghai. Um, the whole body of work has been made in Shanghai, but then from a bigger picture, it's kind of reflecting these universal themes as well. Um, you're gonna see windows um, throughout the house. This is my blue windows and glass canvas series. I've been painting on these window panes, um, reclaimed window panes from the Cultural Revolution. Um, and so you'll see some blue windows throughout the house. Um, then you're going to see this sheer fabric. Ah, this is a part of my bamboo series. When I was living in Los Angeles, what's up LA? I was in LA for many years from Chicago. But when I was in LA, I was working a lot with palm trees, integrating them into my work. So I was known as the palm tree artist in Los Angeles. But I wanted to work with an indigenous tree. And so you see all this bamboo scaffolding that's integrated in the work. Another thing about my work is the, the use of mirrors, meaning that the work is always reflecting back to you. Um, so I want people to kind of look at themselves look inward. Um, also, I say that in life, everyone has some type of breaking, but if you keep living, even the painful and the fragment pieces of life can have value. So all of this is connected to storytelling. Here's some more of my bamboo series. Also, um, my mantra, ah, as it comes to me, it says, I believe that music is the soundtrack to life and art is a snapshot of life. As an artist, I aspire to give people songs, poetry, visual art, and fashion that reflect the human experience. So essentially, with all of these different forms of art that link together, the core of what I endeavor to do is to hopefully inspire people um, through, through my means of service. So if you see circles with feathers, this is a part of this whole dream catching series. Uh, so I wanted to explore this phenomenon of what it means to have dreams, to catch dreams, to pursue dreams, building upon that original Native American uh, motif where they would hang these elaborate circles with nets above their beds. And the thought was when you slept, what does it mean to, it, to catch the good dreams but allow the bad dreams to fall through? But building upon that motif, everyone has dreams. And so what does it mean to, um, to actually not only to dream, but to do? So each piece that you see here has some form of storytelling. When you see, you're going to see roses throughout the house. Um, this is a part of my Determined to Bloom, the rose that grew through the concrete series. If ever you see words in my work, that's me tagging a line, a lyric, or poetry that connects with the work. So for this Determined to Bloom series, you're going to see all these red roses, a few black roses, a few white roses. But all of these has had to fight their way through to bloom. And so the poetry for this says, In the most obscure places you will find me. A hardcore anomaly that will catch you off guard. Stereotype, ostracized, criticized, marginalized, it does not matter. My DNA is programmed to survive and thrive. Long before foundations of cemented jungles were poured, the seed and essence of my soul was firmly established and sown in the deep, dark soil. And now it is time. Spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Spring up a well and give to me life abundantly. Crack, crack, crack. Break through the cracks. Crack, crack, crack. Break through the cracks. I am the rose that grew through the concrete. We are the roses that grew through the concrete, flourishing, radiant, 
determined to bloom. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, go ahead. Go How ahead. did you start? Like, what inspired you to become an artist in the beginning? It really, you know, I'm very thankful. I grew up in Chicago, and Chicago is a rich city of culture and his history and music and food. I hate talking about Chicago food because then I start getting hungry. Um, and But my parents, they never dissuaded my creative bent. They have always been very supportive. The only thing that my parents encouraged each of my siblings was to further your education as far as you can go and continue to always work on your character. But other than that, you know, if I was having a music recital, if, you know, my parents would take us and the neighborhood kids to the museums and things like that. So it wasn't until I was much older that I felt that I was very fortunate that I didn't have to fight to be creative. My parents actually encouraged uh, me to cultivate my creative gifts. And then several years later, many years later, um, I realized that my gifts, they don't compete against each other, they complement each other. So, you know, creativity is like water. Water can be hot, it can be cold, it can be ice, it can be snow. So when I refer to my work, sometimes I'm in the language that I'm looking at it, I may mess, mess up and say, oh, and this piece of poetry or this song here, because it feels the same, that same creative process, but the outcome is how it manifests. So it's very much which came first, the chicken or the egg syndrome. Sometimes I, it's a song that's inspiring the work. Sometimes it's a line of poetry that's inspiring the work or it's the work itself. Um, I just try to stay open to that creative flow and creative process there. But this, like I said, this is very temporary. We're finally getting ready to launch this immersive exhibition. Um, all of my neighbors here, you see more boxes and things like that. If there's any series that I have carried over with me from my time in the U.S., it would be these throne series. Um, these are not chairs. These are thrones, and these become sculptural works uh, made out of stone. The technique is called pavade encrusted. Um, when I was living in Los Angeles and Atlanta, um, the same process, but again, in Shanghai, China is such a amazing and rapidly developing um, city. It's always something being built. Um, so, and when I was in the States, similar process but I would buy the stones but all of these stones here you may see some irregularities there that's because they're for coming from the bricks and the homes and the places that are no more and so I'm integrating those works again 95 percent of these works that you see here has been made using reclaimed materials that I call artifacts I'm not collecting trash hey I'm collecting potential. And so as I know as an artist, if I see an object that calls to me, um, that I can take it through this transformative process and, and create something new out of something old. And I think those themes, again, are universal themes to life. Let me take you in my bathroom. I have a... <laughs> so while they're showing me that, why Shanghai? Why China? Oh, gosh. So a few years back, I was living in Los Angeles and I love my life in LA. This is literally my bathroom. Um, and I wrote in my journal, I said, you know, God, I'm landlocked and I'm ready to see more of the world. I, everything that I'm doing in Shanghai, I paid some hard dues in Los Angeles and things were finally moving along, but I just wanted to travel. And so I'm thinking, um, Europe, more of Europe, or Brazil. That was on my radar. And then out of the blue, I get a call from a friend of a friend. Hey, Radic, there's a new club opening up in Guangzhou, China, and they need a singer, and you need to respond within the next two weeks. And I'm just like, China? China was nowhere on my radar. But I did say, hey, I put that out there. I said, next time I'll be more specific. But I have this saying, Life usually gives you what you want, but it's sometimes packaged oddly. 
And I knew that. And I said, well, it's only a few months. But when I arrived in Guangzhou, I really felt a strong connection that I should set some roots here. The goal has always been to go back and forth. I didn't know that it would take me this long to reestablish myself, but everything is ready now. And ironically, what is great about Shanghai, I say Shanghai is not a melting pot. I've been to many different major cities and things like that, but Shanghai is a gathering spot. And what I love about Shanghai is that you have Chinese coming from all over the different provinces in Shanghai, and then you have foreigners gathered from all over the world here in Shanghai. And for the last several years, I say I've been having an international experience with China as the backdrop. And so as an artist whose mission or whose endeavors is to impact and reach as many people as I can, ironically, Shanghai has been this incubator. Every, everything within my platform, whether it be the music or the fashion or the art or the spoken word, everything that I think that I embody, because I'm always growing as an artist, I've had a chance to pilot them and on a very basic level, <laughs> on a very basic level, I've been able to make a living and sustain myself. I've been able to more than sustain myself. But if I couldn't eat, if I couldn't pay the bills, then I, I couldn't survive here. But on a very basic level, I've been able to sustain myself. But it's beyond um, sustainability, sustaining myself, my platform. And the team of creative artists that I'm working with has been piloted in this international climate. And so I have the confidence that thanks to people like yourself getting helping to share what I'm doing as an artist, that as more people are exposed to the work and to our objectives, that it will resonate with more of China and fingers crossed will resonate with more of the world because it's been piloted here. Um, so this is my shower mate. <laughs> this is my shower mate. It's a dream catcher. So every day when I need to take my shower, it comes right here and right where you're standing, it sits right here. But it says, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I just have my own set of rims. So in life, if there are principles that I can integrate into my life, or if there are artists that influence me, a lot of the work, some of the works are tributes to different artists that have influenced me. I will gladly embrace them and acknowledge them, but I know that if I am really honoring what it means to be creative, it's my rims, you know, I'm a car enthusiast. So it's the rims, it's the spin on it that can give something a completely different approach. Um, so this is the bathroom here. Ah, Again, when I was living in Los Angeles, I was working a lot with palm trees. And so the bamboo series is what I've been primarily one of the series. But a buddy of mine came by, he says, Reddit, I found palm trees, man. And I was like, where did you find these palm trees? He told me, I got my little saw. And I have a few works that are a nod to uh, my works in Los Angeles. So this is palm tree going through this blue window series. And it's called the Tree of Serendipity and Yuanfen. Yuanfen in Chinese means destiny. So nice, nice washroom, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Now we come into my main living quarters, and I literally have been left with a bed and a refrigerator. This is what dedication to a dream, dedication to a vision, and Slightly crazy. I'm crazy in a good way, looks like. So you have more of the thrones. Um, you have more of the, the doors of Shanghai. And again, all of these art pieces are coming with sound installations and things like that. Um, this piece here is one of my mantras here, this is part of my Blue Windows and Glass Canvas series. Um, and this piece is called So What? And it's linked to music and to poetry as well. All right, nice. All right, so I live in the former French concession area. 
and there's a lot of shops that are open and close, open and close. And I further wanted to tell stories related to life with these reclaimed mannequin parts. So when you see body parts in my work, that's me reclaiming these body parts. Um, so this piece is called Keepers of the Dream. Now, keep in mind, um, I have been recording a whole project called Shanghai Chapters of this eclectic soul rock music that's linked. And we were able to link some of the instrumentation from the music and marry it to the art. So this piece here is called Keepers of the Dream. And again, you will walk through the exhibition. Let me turn this on. You'll walk through the exhibition with headsets and the paintings will speak back to you. But then at scheduled times, you walk into the same site and an ensemble cast of performance artists will bring to life some of the pieces that you hear. So this piece is called Keepers of the Dream. Keepers of the Dream. We are the keepers of the dream. A high price was paid by those who went before us so that we could manifest powerful realities they only dreamt. Again, this is what working from home looks like. I have, I had no intentions on opening up my doors. I must share this because I think it's an important um, factor when you are pursuing goals and dreams. I had no intentions on opening up my doors whatsoever. I was just working from home, tetrising my way through. As an artist, I don't like to have my work kind of stacked up. And a friend of mine, Amena, what's up, Amena? Shout out to Amena. She's like a vision therapist for me. She came by and she says, Redick, this exhibition that you're working on is going to happen one way or another. But dude, like your house is like a freaky museum. You need to open up your doors and let people in. I was like, really? Are you sure? She says, trust me let people in. And so for over two years, no exaggeration, I literally have given hundreds of tours, organized tours, field trips, schools, community, private, you name it. And so this is more of the house. I kind of explained some of the series. So you see more of the dream catchers, more of the thrones, more of the bamboo. All of this body of work is ready to go. And then this Behind here, <laughs> I've been left with the bed and the refrigerator. So behind here is my refrigerator. And this here is my bed. This is my bed. And 85% of the work that you see here has been made in this home, in this room here. Amazing, amazing stuff, Redick. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> what do you like the most about Shanghai? What I love most about Shanghai um, really is the people, um, both the foreigners that are coming from all over the world, but also just the local Shanghainese culture um, and also the Sh Chinese that are coming from all over China. It's a very interesting mix of, of people and characters here in Shanghai. All right, nice. What do you like the least about Shanghai? Oh, the, the scooters uh, on the roads, the, you know, back, back in Western countries in the States, you have look both ways before you cross the street. Here, it's look always, look in every single direction <laughs> before you cross the street. And then the scooters that drive on the sidewalks, that's like a little, that's a pet peeve for me. But other than that, it's like... What has your black experience been like in China so far? Um, I think being black in China has been a wonderful opportunity to kind of dispel stereotypes and preconceived notions of what people may have seen on television and things like that. And so just to be, to relate to people as human, as a human being, but then also recognizing that I am a black individual, I'm a black male, um, and to connect with them on a very personal level dispels a lot of negative stereotypes that are often projected and that they see through media. What's the funniest thing that happened to you here as a black person? Oh, there are so many, um, <laughs> there are so many funny things that happen.
that happened, that continue to happen. I think the air, the the what we call personal space, <laughs> and what is personal space here in 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 China and Shanghai is a lot different. And so I, I think at certain points you may be used to being in a crowded elevator and someone is touching your butt, but it's not like they're touching your butt to get a free feel. It's just like, no, oh, there's some more space. We can, we can all get in here. And so personal space, you sometimes just have to laugh about it. What do you think is the general attitude towards black people in uh, China? Um, I think in general, I like to think that most people are open to some degree and open-minded. What I love about Shanghai is Shanghai in itself has this very, what I call the curious factor. And I love it that there are a lot of people that are curious, curious to try new um, foods, curious to try new um, different types of genres, whether it be dance or music. And so being here in Shanghai, there is a strong kind of curious factor and I find that fascinating. How do you get your hair done in, in uh, China? Is there a barber here, a black barber, or how do you do it? Well, right now I'm in my let it grow out phase. <laughs> I had my, I, for several years, I had an amazing stylist uh, by the name of Terry, and Terry moved back to Switzerland, and he was doing a lot of, um, there, there are plenty of black, now here's the thing about Shanghai. There is a market, there is a community for everything. And so I know some of the brothers are getting the hookups with their tight fades or whatever styles. For me, you know, I just said I'll just let my hair grow out for a little bit and save myself the trouble of trying to find another stylist to take care of me. So right now um, I'm doing the best I can trying to hook myself up. <laughs> What's the major difference between Shanghai or China and where you're from in the States? Well, Shanghai in and of itself is they say this is the window shop into the rest of China. And so often like when, before you go into a store, you'll see a preview. And I really do think that it's the dynamics of Shanghai that has kept me this long in China. Um, from my experience, if, I, if it was not for Shanghai, I don't perceive myself have living this long in China if not for Shanghai. Um, it's just very dynamic. Some of the, from the artistic standpoint, um, the community that's growing up here, that's coming, just a very dynamic city. Um, so it's the, the multiculturalism that's here, the diversity here, and then also it has become a, a wonderful opportunity, a land, a place of opportunities. I'm a dreamer doer. And I've been able to manifest some powerful dreams here um, that can only have been orchestrated for me in Shanghai, China, with the way the city, the way it's set up, and the way my paths have overlapped with other individuals and other, um, I guess, com um, acts of commerce and things like that. Is there something that black people in China could do to um, improve a race relations here between black people and Chinese people? Yes, and but it goes back to the basics of just being your best self. I have many selves. I have many selves. And I try to acknowledge all of my selves, but I endeavor to be my best self. And I think when anyone is endeavoring to put forth the best representation of themselves, not just as a black person or a woman or a man, but just as a human being. When you endeavor to walk in a level of integrity, putting your best self forward, you interact with other people and other um, demographics, and that, that encounter automatically begins to shift the narrative around whatever negative um, associations or preconceived notions they may have had about black people. And so just good old-fashioned home training. Be your best self. Do your best. That speaks volumes in and of itself. If you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? 
If I can change one thing in the world, which I am working on, that is to encourage people to give themselves permission to live their best lives and to pursue their dreams and to pursue their aspirations. We only have one life as far as I know <laughs> and time is all we have. And so what you do with your life for yourself matters. And so it would be to give yourself permission and to extinguish as much fear in your lives as possible because fear is such a deterrent for holding, for holding us back. What's your proudest accomplishment? To date, the fact that I said yes, that I said yes to coming abroad, yes to pursuing my dreams, yes to, yes to life. I, it sounds very hallmark and cliche-ish. I know, I'm a, I'm a flowery guy. <laughs> but the fact that I said yes, it's a huge accomplishment. And I'm proud of myself for allowing myself the ability to say yes and to put that yes into action. What's the biggest lesson you've learned or learned in life? The biggest lesson that I continue to learn in life is that even our failures can factor into something that is positive. Because for me, life is about learning. The whole, so I, I say I want to die a work in progress. Um, and so even the areas in life where I have failed, if I've learned something about those from my failures, those things factor in as I continue to pro progress forward. So failure does not have to be final. What's your earliest memory? Wow! Oh gosh, I guess my earliest memory would be of my mom um, because my memory kind of jogs back and it's often triggered. I think it's of my mom just kind of picking me up and smiling and, and, and playing with me. So I probably, one or two years old, I can jog back some memories there. So it's of my mother. If the world was listening, what's one message you would share? I would say, don't ever change the ways that you love. The ways that you look at and live your life. Always be true, authentically you. Always let light shine in all you do. Because the world is full of darkness and disparity. Everyone is searching for hope and clarity and we don't need carbon copies of the same but we need originals like you to sign their name so world if you're listening be original and true unapologetically you inside and out don't walk in fear or doubt be original each day and each and every way Originally true, originally you. Wow, I, I love the creativity, man. I'm excited. What's one thing that China does really well that the world could learn from? Ooh, one thing that China does very well is they will try and rapidly. I mean, sometimes we. I'm all about planning and I'm all about strategy, but there are some times where I think we tend to deliberate too much. We deliberate, we contemplate too much. And I'm just like, I've been in a meetings or seeing construction sites and it's just like, oh, how did that just spring up like that? They will think about it and do. Now, there's room, always room for excellence in everything, not just here in China, but just in life. But the fact to think and quickly respond, I think China does that very well. What's your favorite place in China? Somewhere that is a must visit, in your opinion. The Yellow Mountains are, um, 
you know, they're iconic, and I think that that's a, a, a place that people should definitely um, visit. Personally, you know, you have this, I'm, I'm from Chicago, but then I lived in Los Angeles, and you have this kind of East Coast, West Coast rivalry between like LA, New York, and it's this whole Shanghai, Beijing scenario. I, I rep Shanghai, <laughs> and I just think that there are many fascinating places within the city of Shanghai, within Shanghai, that is worth the trip. People are sleeping. Y'all sleeping on Shanghai. That's okay. I'm woke over here. <laughs> Y'all sleeping on Shanghai. Shanghai is a very, China is a very dynamic country, but the, the Shanghai itself, it's fascinating. So you owe yourself to at least come visit. What, what would you say Dayton is like? I asked this question, whatever country I'm in. What is Dayton like here in terms of being a black man trying to date in uh, China? Uh, I think that it's the same scenarios, they're universal. The same dating scenarios are, are kind of universal. You put yourself out there and um, my problem is, if it is a problem, I think I'm just too fascinated and consumed with with my projects and things like that. Um, I, I laugh, sometimes my brothers are like, I didn't see them looking at you, I was like, no, I didn't see it. So I think they're universal. I mean, dating here in Shanghai is the same as dating anywhere else. It's, it's, it's the same dynamics, people are people. What's a common misconception about China? I think yeah. a common misconception and it all goes back to what is portrayed in the media and things like that is, you know, that everybody's riding on bikes and, you know, sometimes I go home back to the States and some of the questions that I'm getting, I know it's fascinating that I'm here, but I'm just like, no, this is a very modern society, um, technology <laughs> and things like that. Um, I think in most people's minds, they tend to look at China from the like 1970s and back 1950s. But this is a very progressive um, country and definitely Shanghai is a very progressive uh, and cosmopolitan city as well. And so I, you, you owe yourself, the thing that I, when I first moved here, and this is what I told myself, I said don't compare yourself, don't compare this experience to anything else. Just come with an open mind. And if you come with an open mind, you will find something that you do enjoy, or that you like. And that's been one of the things that has kept me, is to try to maintain an open mind and just to take the experience for what it is. Any advice for black people looking to visit or move here? Do a little bit of research. I would definitely say do, do some research, um, particularly if you're thinking about coming to live here. Um, but if it's just for a holiday or vacation, just find the time and come. And you know, you can look, I mean, any trip advisors and things like that and kind of map out some things to do, some touristy things. But then part of the, for me in traveling, is allowing myself to go off the beaten path and discover some things as well. So if you're coming to think about living here, definitely do some more research. But if you're coming, if you're thinking about just traveling, what do you have to lose? Just come and enjoy yourself. Get your visa and, and make it happen. Do you have a secret superpower? Something that you do really well that is not well known? A secret superpower of mine, there's two. One. One is I'm an encourager. All of this, whether it be music, art, fashion, I want to encourage and inspire people. So that's the more altruistic side of it. And then another secret power, superpower is I'm a spaceologist. And I didn't realize it until my buddies started, hey, can you help us pack? Because I can somehow compartmentalize and get space and make room. I mean, look at my home here. So a, a secret power of mine, superpower, is I'm a bit of a spaceologist as well. I can make space where it doesn't seem to be any more room. I can find 
a way to make some more space, make more room. If you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, gosh. If I can have dinner with one person right now, dead or alive, it would be to my artistic hero, and his name is Mr. Gordon Parks. And I learned of Gordon Parks much later into my adulthood years, but he was the epitome of what it meant to live life to the fullest and to use every gift and talent that you have and not to allow others to define you by your gifts or talents. And so when I learned of Gordon Parks, he helped me with this understanding of taking the limits off of myself. And he also helped me to understand that I am gifted to give. And so, you know, I have so much respect and admiration for the life and the legacy of Gordon Parks. Where can people find you online? Well, right now, you can find me through my Instagram. I'm really trying to boost up those numbers. So <laughs> I am the artistry of Reddick on Instagram. And then, you know, there's the website um, that is forthcoming with the exhibition. But for now, the artistry of Reddick. Um, if you'd like to find out more about my platform and my artistry, just find me on Instagram, The Artistry of Reddick. What are your ambitions for life in Shanghai? My ambitions, which is why I have stayed in Shanghai, is to release this immersive, inspirational exhibition. Um, the old saying of take care of home first. So for several years, Shanghai has been my home. And it's important that you know, we released this first edition of this exhibition um, here in Shanghai. So that is the immediate ambition, that's the immediate goal. But my desire is that this, ambition, this exhibition will travel to wherever city you are watching this interview, that somehow, some way, this exhibition, this platform would make its way to your city and to your town as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to share your story or have us visit your region, send us a message on any of our social media platforms or via our website. That's good.